Hey everyone, Tim Higgins here with AI Solution. So we're going to talk today about the DevOps products uh, that come from Broadcom. Now I have Broadcom slash CA because if you don't know, Broadcom purchased CA, but I kind of left it on there because some of the products still say CA, so we're going to leave it at that. But what we want to focus on today is the idea of moving between your products as far as like how to make them work together in a real world scenario. So we're gonna talk about the products portfolios. We're gonna look at a really good developer's journey with a demo. And then of course, we'll just move forward from there. So the first thing we'll do is look at the product portfolio. When you think about your applications, you think about plan, develop, security, you know, build, test, deploy. Uh, and then of course, after that, it isn't the end of the game. You still gotta monitor it. And of course you got consumptions. So when you think about putting some things together, we have like microservices, you have your mobile apps when it comes to deploying, monitoring them. Now, we're not going to cover too much of that, um, but we are going to focus a little bit more on automation and how a lot of these products can work together. Again, here are some of the products in the list. Like, think about Plan. You've got Rally. We're going to talk about that. Uh, ARD. When it comes to development, um, we don't do, obviously, Visual Studio or Eclipse, but those are usually what your developers use. But we will talk about TDM and some other things when we get there. Uh, securing your application, you got API management. We're not going to cover a lot of security, um, mainly because it's not my ballpark, right? But um, we will kind of briefly mention it. Now, when we talk about build, you've got continuous delivery directories, which we'll call CDD. You got release automation, basically doing your builds, passing them through the to other servers, to your QA, your dev, your test. We're going to look at all that. And testing, um, we're really going to focus mainly on using Blaze Meter. Uh, but of course we have dev test and I'll talk about why I chose blaze meter on, of, over dev test in this and of course TDM to generate our synthetic data uh, and then we have our releases now again your releases release automation comes to mind now atomic is release automations competitor which is ironic because both of them are owned by CA uh, deploy of course you'd use CDD to deploy it into production and then operation, I kind of jumped twice, but it's fine. Operation, you think about how you want to continue to, to monitor this. Well, again, we have APM, we have Blaze Meter. There's a lot of tools we can use that. Now, we're, again, we're not going to focus on that. We're mainly focused on the DevOps um, products in this scenario. So, And you'll see why in a few minutes. Here's another view through plan, design, plan, design, build, test, run, deploy. Right. Well, I'm used to saying deploy, but run and monitor. Right. So deploy should be right after that. And here's kind of where the products fit into place as well. Now let's talk about the demo and what we're going to pursue with this demo. Now in this de demo, you start with your production uh, operations, which is in my mind, first thing is mine is rally. And then of course your feature requested, basically you're an end user, and we're going to talk about this, a manager or a director decided to come up with some user stories. So out of these user stories, we were able to create some requirements. Out of those requirements, we created some features. Okay, So then the developer comes and adds those features. And then they want to publish it to QA. Of course, the QAs want to test it, and then if it passes, it publishes to prod, and then you want to continue monitoring, okay? Now, I'm going to kind of sum through these because I don't want this video to be five days long, right? But Rally is your best place to actually start managing all of this. And then Rally can export easily into ARD. ARD is Agile Requirements Designer. Um, and then you can, what you do, you put your user stories in Rally, and then you can export into ARD, create your requirements, and then put it back to Rally. Um, and in this case, uh, again, I'm kind of just bouncing through this because we don't have time for an in-depth of every product that would take probably a week or more. But let's say management uh, produces some new user stories that get entered into Rally. Well, architects import those user stories into ARD to make them physical requirements uh, for those user stories. And then, of course, it gets to the developers. Now, it gets to the developers. We're going to contact developers through Select. Our feature is going to be created as a task in TFS. Um, and then the development environment is going to be created. Now, in, probably in a modern world, you'd probably use Docker for that. But not everybody's still on Docker. So in this case, I'm not using Docker because it's an easier visualization. But all these products support Docker and Kubernetes. Um, so, and then we're saying that. We're going to spin up the environment for them. We're going to create some mock data, and we'll get detailed to that. And the mock data is created by TDM. Then the developers add the new features through their, their code of choice. In this case, we're using TFS and Visual Studio. Uh, and then they check it back in. Once it's checked in, then it moves to QA and then um, using release automation. Now, we'll talk about those when we get to those features. 
Again, TDM, we're going to cover it pretty heavily. CDD at this point is a pipeline, right? Pipeline planning, orchestration, analytics tools. The one thing that a lot of people miss about CDD is it's it, you really don't just use it for your orchestration, which it's hard to not visualize it as that, especially when you're, because we're going to do the same thing. But it also gathers great metrics, right? So we'll talk about that when we get to CDD. You want to use CDD to gather your metrics to how to improve your deployments, right? That's, that's kind of its benefit. Of course, release automation, you hear RA. Um, we're gonna talk about that. So here in our demo, CDD creates a build. This is moving to QA. So once the developer has checked it back in, then it gets, the CDD creates a build out of TFS. Um, CDD then connects to RA and pushes the latest build to QA. And then from there, CDD can use Veracode, which we won't do in this demo, but use Veracode to do a dynamic scan on the build to look for any security. Now. From there, QA can run their test, and we're gonna use BlazeMeter to do a load test and a functional test, and then of course you can use CA APM, FKH Performance Monitoring, to monitor these, uh, to monitor this once it's been pushed into QA. Um, then once it's approved, of course everything passes, then it goes to prod. Now we're doing the best case scenario, right? So all these are gonna pass, but I will explain to them when I do them um, how I got there. Okay, and then of course once it's done, it goes to production, and then you only want to run another test because it's a different set of servers, and at that point our operation is complete. But we do continue monitoring. We're not going to cover that again. Blaze meter um, and CA application you'd want to use for that. So let's let's go look at the live demo now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just collapse that slide completely, and we're going to open up a couple of things here. First thing we're looking at is this is our application. Okay, so I have a medical application here. And in this application, it's gonna be kind of slow because I'm starting and restarting IIS through this process. And if you might know anything about IIS, it has a lot of caching. The thing to look at too is we have our 201 server and we have our 202 server. Now 202 is dev. So if I hit refresh, it's not there anymore. If I hit QA refresh, it's not there anymore. And if I go look at the server, you can see why. There physically is not, there's only a prod. Um, there's no QA or dev here, okay? So let's go back over here, and this is our this is our landing page, or test page, if you will. Um, we have doctors. Now, we're not gonna touch any of this. Um, I just thought this would be a good example because in medical field, you always have PII issues, so we're gonna talk about that. The big ones we're gonna focus on is our claims list. Okay, so we're gonna look at our claims. Um, again, give it a few seconds. Okay, so the thing is, the reason I chose these is because we're gonna look at claims, we're gonna look at adjusters, and we're gonna look at Clement. Now, the Clement name should match, our adjuster name should match inside claims. So therefore, we have this relationship with our data already. Okay, so if I go look at a, uh, adjuster, right? Give it one second again to load. So that name matched. We saw that. And then from there, if we go look at our uh, climate info, uh, this name should match. Now in here, I have some PII right away. I've got social security number. I got a date of birth, right? So we've got to make sure all that's mass. But remember this name? Um, so if I, sorry, I must have a bad link there. Apologize about that. I kind of threw this site together for this demo. Um, it is there and the same with our adjuster. So it is there, okay? Now let's go ahead and start this off if we go back over here to look at our actually workspace let me drag this over this is cdd now in cdd we have our phases we're going to initialize dev and what that's going to do is that's going to use ra to create our dev environment and it's going to restart iis for us and then we're going to go to our dev now our dev we'll talk about it in a few seconds and then qa and then to prod and then to post deployment or continue monitoring okay now with saying that, CDD again has a lot of great information. You use it for a lot of statistics, right? So, and then also, once we're inside of our releases, you can have as many releases, you can create these releases dynamic. We're gonna talk about how all this works. I can also click on my activity and get a list of everything that's going on. So if something failed, I can see why it failed. Um, and we also have tokens that we pass along between these products, okay? So that's how we go between uh, rally and TFS and all that good stuff and, and there's also a really nice library of components that allow you to connect to these other products so let's go ahead and kick this off um, let's see if I can do a little real estate share here for a second 
because what I want to do is this is our IIS server if I click run this is going to kick off this process right here and what it should be doing in a few seconds it's in the queue it's initializing it's going to kick off now if you notice we have our dev folders been brought over and it's also bringing over the assets for it, or all the binaries and stuff with it see so we're good to go so that is setting up an environment for the developers to come in and actually work in so what we want to do at that point let me pull this window over is go back over here once we're completely done and we're going to hit refresh on our 200 because that's where our dev environment is now with seeing that while that's pulling up it's going to take a few seconds I created a couple of these manual tasks just to kind of put a pause reality is sometimes they would be pause in these manual tasks I did it in this case because it gives me a chance to move on to the next story now, while our environment is spinning up, again, it takes IIS a bit to spin up. It's still spinning. Oh, there it comes. As soon as it comes up, we'll come up here and we'll look at our, notice there's no data, okay? Because we didn't want to bring production data down because of the PII. Now, in the real world, we can use TDM to do subsets if we wanted to and bring down certain parts of the data. But at this point, we're just going to use synthetic data generation just to generate the data. But again, it has to be realistic enough to keep those relationships within those tables but still be valid data so a social security number should look like a social security number and so forth so with seeing that what we're going to do is go ahead and run to the next step um, we'll go ahead and say this is done and then completes this phase and now you could set these to automatic notice I have manual this, this one could be an automatic to where this gets done this automatically kicks off but it makes it hard for me to walk you through it okay so the first thing we can do is we're going to do a slack message and we're going to send it to our release management team and we're going to say hey this development has been, start, has been started on this and what you'd really do um, you're going to see here next rally all these are grayed out because they're turned off for a good reason we can't log into our rally environment right now for some reason uh, maybe in the future I'll do another demo showing the rally environment integration but I'm really not focused on rally right now anyway um, but I do have other documentation on where I've migrated those together so you can see that in the other videos but here we're going to update the rally task remember there was a user story in rally that was created that created tasks through ARD now you didn't see that let's pretend like that already happened okay um, but here we're going to hit our task our task one and it's in progress okay so we set that flag to in progress the next thing we do is update the user story we're going to grab our user story and we're going to set it into in progress okay and then we're going to create a work item in TFS called task then the developer is going to come in. The developer needs more stuff. So we have a service virtualization. So we're going to go over here. Um, almost timed out. I'm going to hit refresh just in case it timed out so you can see it. And we have a service virtualization for our endpoint here. And then we have, um, we need more data, right? So let me go ahead and refresh on the submit here. We don't have any data, so we need to request the data. So we're going to run this one. It's going to create our virtual endpoint for our website. And then we're going to generate the data. Okay, and then we'll pause again and say the developer needs to start working. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so that started our site. That started our data pool. So let's go look. So if I go over here and see it's running now. So now our virtual service endpoint is running. And then if I go over here to my data pool and do a refresh and TDM, notice now my data is beginning to be generated. Now this could take a few seconds. Unfortunately, this really is a pool, so it gets picked up. Um, but let's go see if we have any action. One thing I did do, um, was I went ahead and opened up our database and we have our dev database we have our QA database and we have our production database and right now we only care about dev so I'm just going to take a peek and as you can see my data is beginning to be generated now I know I have a hundred rows so it must be working on these others so if I go to the website now let's bring it over and this is let's hit refresh now we have data in our development environment now let's look and make sure that we are still being honest with ourselves so we got Betty here this is a claimant name so if I go look at claimant information I have Betty there so in theory this is going to be uh, not really Betty's social security number because this is going to be gener generated data and then if we go back to claims and look at our next one which would be uh, adjuster okay so we're looking for this name <laughs> can't pronounce it I'm sorry um, so if we click on a gesture 
let's give it a second to refresh. Sometimes I'll go back to the beginning to refresh. And there's our adjuster. So we still keep that relationship in our data. We gave our developers a good environment. They have a virtualized backend. Now, one of the reasons you may want to do a virtualized backend is it's very common for um, people to use third-party tools. And let's pretend like one of those third-party tools is going to charge us every time we use them. So we can virtualize that backend. Now, it's not virtualized. Uh, it's not a VM. It's not a virtualized machine. It's a virtualized service. So it's in essence, it's a virtualized endpoint. Okay. Um, so what that allows us to do is write code against that without being charged. Or let's say another department uh, your mainframe team is not going to stand up an environment just for you to develop in. So therefore, I can virtualize that part. But and then we create a synthetic data. The synthetic data is very realistic. This is the claims, um, but it's not production data. So if we go over and look at claims, let's see. So this is that name, and as claims is pulling up again, I apologize. IIS when it gets refreshed, it takes a few seconds for its caching to go through. And then if I look at claims, notice that name's not even in this list. Okay. So it's not production data, it is synthetic data. Now let's go back to our flow. Okay, so now the developer is gonna open up Visual Studio, they're gonna do their work. Next thing we're gonna do is stop that um, virtual service, okay, because we're done with it, so we're gonna kill it. Um, and then we're going to create a deployment plan inside release automation. And then we're gonna deploy that plan inside release automation, okay? Now one thing let me point out here is, just so you can see that there's no magic behind the scenes, I named the project temp3, okay, because I have a temp2 that was already used. So let's go ahead and collapse our tokens. And let's finish our task. So our developer is done doing its stuff, which is here. So we're going to say done. And again, this would probably be automatic. When the developer checked in, you could have Visual Studio. Because the piece that I did miss is we stopped our virtual service. Then we're going to run this uh, this build inside TFS. So this would open up TFS and actually run the build, which would create the archives for us that we would deploy through the other departments or the other phases. So let's go ahead and so yes, our service virtualization is stopped. And if you notice, we now have um, our release being deployed to development with temp3. So that's correct. Now let's go back over here to CDD. Now that we're done, what we'll do is we'll open up Rally. Um, we'll verify that we want, you know, the test case here. So check test case results. And in this case, we would go down and say what we want is to set our feature as complete. Okay. And then we want to set our user story as complete. And then the last thing we'll do is contact our Slack team again and say, hey, our stuff is now going, is done. And dev, we're about ready to go to QA. So now let's go ahead and kick off our QA. Now in QA, again, we're going to notify the team because this may not happen right away, right? So this, in reality, what you would do is you would take your, your ID, right? Your, your initial ID from this um, user story and side rally and pass it along. So we would say deployment for ID, blah, 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 is now starting to be testing in QA. It also helps you track it over here, okay? So we're gonna tell the team we're starting. First thing we do is run another deployment and this deployment is actually going to um, push it to QA. And then once it's there, we gotta generate some fresh data. Now, just to prove ourselves sanity, we've looked at dev, dev has data, um, production has data, QA still does not have data, okay? I'll hit refresh, notice there's no data. So we gotta generate that data for QA, um, and then we're gonna pause long enough to run our scripts, and I'll explain how I did that. But let's go ahead and kick this off. So our deployment has stopped. Let's go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, that already stopped. Our deployment should be getting ready to go here. So let's see what we did. Uh, run deployment, so that's correct. So it should be pushing this over here in a few seconds. There we go. So our QA deployment has started. All right, notice dev QA, temp three, temp three. So basically our binaries that we checked in here are now being pushed into QA here, which is the, what it really does behind the scenes is it will copy all the binaries it needs into here. And that's what, what it does, okay? Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now that is done, okay? And then let's go ahead and jump over here. Now our request for our database is being uh, created now. So our synthetic data is beginning to be worked. Again, there's not much I can do for speeding this up. 
so now it's running so now we should be seeing some data up here let's bring this over here and again it should keep the relationship and it should still make sure we don't have PII data and we don't because it's gonna be synthetic and not copied from production what I want to do is this is our dev let's go ahead and look at our QA and if we just see how many we have here we've got a hundred there so we're good so it's beginning to create the data so and we've got data so it took a few seconds to come up so again very importantly remember the name so yes and if we go down to that's a climate so if we go down to here that name should be here right so let's give it a few seconds there we go uh, so we have a fake social security number for Yash. We have a date of birth. So let's go back up here and we'll look at our claims again. Inside of our claim list, we should have an adjuster with this name. So let's go, do you like how I miss saying the names? Cause I'm pretty sure I'm gonna mispronounce them. Um, so we have our adjuster. And so we still have that relationship between our data, even though it's synthetic mock data, it's not real data. Now what that allows us to do now is to create our scripts. Now, what I use to create the scripts, so I've already created two scripts, is if you have the Blaze Meter recorder, and I have demos on how to do that, you can hit record, it records you, and then you save your output. So I saved my output as a YAML file, which allows me to do functional testing for the front end, and also as a JMeter file, which of course allows me to do my load testing. So we're gonna kick those off, so we have a functional test and a uh, performance test. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna mark this done, give it a second. So that's initialized and that's initialized. So let's go look at Blaze Meter. This is our performance test. I've got one running, we just kicked it off. And then if I go to my functional testing, I've got one running, so we just kicked it off. Now I have a fail, which is interesting because I haven't had a fail yet. Hopefully this won't fail. But if I looked at this, now this takes a few, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at one that I ran already. And the cool thing is it gives you all the information that you need, including a video of what you did. So this is kind of a step through of what the um, script file is doing to get its results. Okay. Now, the truth is the other one might have failed because I probably was playing in a stop IIS or something like that along the process. Um, now, your functional for your performance, I'm sorry. If you notice, I have this is the metrics here. Go to our timeline. We get some really good KPI metrics here including uh, every now and then I'll get my Selenium's, uh, my user, right? And then if, now I'm not gonna give uh, a demo on how all this works, I already have that out there. But here I should be able to pick up my users. This takes a while to render, or sometimes there's an issue with it rendering on my part on the scripts, not on the application. Um, but you should get screenshots. And then if we go down to um, errors, I can see if there's any errors, my logs. So we get some really good information about the test itself. If I go down to configuration, you can see that I uploaded um, my JMeter file and my YAML script, okay? And that's the performance testing. Now, if I go back to functional, again, it's running. Hopefully this time I won't do anything stupid. I ran this about an hour ago, but I also probably deleted the data. Because remember, it's doing physical functioning testing on the site itself. So if I do anything to the site, then it will fail. All right, so let's um, go back to where we are, why those are running. So in theory, those would be running. Um, we're going to update and say, let's go back, I'm sorry. Once those get through running, then we go and update rally. Okay, we update our user story, say it's accepted. Um, and then we notify our team and say, hey, we're done with QA. Everything's happy. So let's go back over here into our next step will be prod. Now prod has approval. Again, we let the team know that we're now moving our stuff into production. We run another deployment. So if we go and look at release automation, we have dev QA, and I can click on this and get the details if I want. Um, but this is a very simple demo, so I'm just kind of showing it from here. And then the last thing we're gonna do is run another smoke test, basically. We're gonna run another load test in Blaze Meter because in theory, this would be a different set of servers, okay? And the last thing we do is tell the, the Slack team, hey, we're done. So your code changes are in production, so forth, so forth. And then of course, the very last thing you would do is make sure you have some kind of monitoring set up. Um, and then you wanna make sure you send emails to everybody, not just using Slack saying, hey, this release is in production. So let's go ahead, we'll approve this. I approve this message. We're going to click and give it a few seconds. It's going to create our deployment. 
and then it's going to create another load test. Now this load test is the same one as before, so um, I don't expect too much changes in that. So if I go here, now you can see we're pushing our, our code into prod. And again, what this is doing is this is actually copying over a fresh copy of the binaries and the code into this folder in production. So that's done. And if we go look at our, and the truth is, I didn't think about that um, because I'm doing this back to back. That may be why our test failed because it may be trying to do something while I'm copying at the same time. But this is production, or 200. If I hit refresh, give it a sack up. And again, your production, and again, that's a proof that it's restarting because it takes it a while to cache, right? But here we've got our QA, 201, our dev, 202, and now our production, 200. And there we go, here's our data. And this is, I should have showed you, but this is the exact same data you had before because this is production data. Now back to our CDD, we can finish this off, say next. There's nothing really to do here, so it's just gonna go, what do you want me to do? Just say you're done, and then say you're done, okay? The reason I did that is because now I have activities over here that I could look at. Um, if something failed, I can go through here and see why a task failed. I also have, let's go ahead and put this back. I also have my tokens here that this is what's driving a lot of the releases, okay? And then if I go back to my dashboard, I also have statistics over here. And you can modify this dashboard however you want. I can say, you know, give me certain things, yada, yada, yada. Um, and you can add other widgets to this dashboard as well. You also have reports, which you expect. So you can set up reports on what you want to see as far as your releases, releases over time. Um, it's a lot of good information that you can get right here in CDD. Then when you go to TDM, TDM again is your test data management tool. This is doing all your data. So I'm using it to generate data on the fly. We could also use it to run PII scripts on the data instead of generating fresh data, but I figured that was just as clean. The dev portal, dev portal is for our service virtualization. It allows us to set up uh, services to basically um, monitor back in. I mean, not monitor, I'm sorry, replace. I was reading that message. But we can set up a virtual service to replace a section of our code that either we can't test or run or program against for some reason. Um, and then, of course, our release automation. Release automation, again, is your tool that does releases throughout the system, but it's so uh, massive of a tool that it, the concept of release automation is you have actions and there's hundreds and hundreds of actions. And if not, you can write them yourself, but you have actions that become flows, flows that become process, process that become deployment templates. Let's go over here, uh, that become deployment templates. Your deployment templates then get, um, is what you would use whenever you're doing your deployments throughout your system, okay? So that's kind of in a nutshell. And then, uh, of course, BlazeMeter is a very strong tool for doing any kind of testing. Uh, as you see, performance testing, functional testing, um, you know, API monitoring if you want to. So this would kind of be one of your end results. See, that time the, the test actually passed. It's because I wasn't playing with the code. <laughs> um, so we're good there. So that was the last run we did. I can go and see. And again, here's a walk through my scripts. Uh, and we can run it and see exactly what it did. Um, I can look at the logs if I have any issues. Um, so there's a lot of good information that you can get here. Um, I can get detailed of what actually happened, uh, kind of like in a stack, what I'd call a stack trace point of view. Um, and the same thing with my performance view, I can come in here. That one's still running, but that was the production one. So let's go ahead and look at, we can get good information based off of this. So with seeing all that in a nutshell, we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint for a few seconds, um, just to end it off. And if so, if we go back to here, we had our light demo. And then these are a little more information. So we didn't get into Rally, but Rally really is a management side of things. More importantly, I like having Rally to migrate with Agile, Des uh, Agile Requirements Designer, we'll just call it ARD, uh, to help with my requirements, right? So it's right in the name, the requirements. But these two work very good together and you can push data back and forth. And of course, CDD allows you to, to do that in an automation kind of fashion. Um, security, we didn't get into security, but it's big on that. The builds, um, CDD and release automation works with all your with all your main builds. Um, and if it doesn't, then there's always something, you can always write a plugin for it. 
uh, testing. Dev test is the service virtualization. Now, I didn't tell you why I didn't use dev test to run my Selenium scripts. You can, but unfortunately, the Selenium scripts have updated faster than dev test has. So I'm assuming they're going to come out with a function with that. So I use dev test as a service virtualization, uh, the second tab, not as running my test scripts because it didn't support the latest version of Selenium, but Blaze Meter does. So it kind of worked in my favor anyway, so I use Blaze Meter for both tests. Okay, We talked about TDM, uh, creating test data management, basically creating uh, synthetic data to do our testing, and but keep it very realistic. The, the code, the data looked like it should look like, so developers wouldn't know the difference, and the QA team wouldn't know the difference. A username is a username, so security number looks like a security number. You know, a birthday looks like a birthday, and there's a lot of functionality you can put into that. I have a lot of good videos out there on how to do that. Um, synthetic data is one of the, well, one of the best features TDM has is what we call the data painter. And the data painter has such flexibility on putting rules around your data. And what I mean by that is I can say a birthday has to, the person can't be younger than 18 and older than 65, but the date has to look like this and it actually will figure it out. Um, and you know what? I actually did that in the code. So if you looked at, I think this is where the birthday is. I do have a rule in here that says they have to be old because it's medical. Uh, for this, they have to be, yeah, they have to be younger, no younger than 18, but no older than um, 65. And it was smart enough to say, well, then that means the years are going to be within this category. So um, releases, we showed release automation. Release automation, again, can control each step along the way, QA, dev, prod, whatever you have. And it also integrates with all the other products. Remember the whole actions into um, actions into flows, flows into processes. Um, and then CDD pretty much was driving the whole force. Now CDD again is more than just an orchestration tool. It allows you to keep those metrics to see if you had fail failure points uh, that you can work on. In other words, are we spending too much time in QA? Are we spending too much time between QA and production? Right. It took us a month to go to production, but we realized by looking at our releases that 90% of the time was in QA. So then we'll go talk to QA and QA is like, oh, well, we're waiting for infrastructure to stand up test environments. So, so it gives you that ability to see where you need to make these changes. Monitoring, again, CA, uh, Broadcom has some great monitoring tools. CAPM is one of them. Blaze Meter, of course, is the other one we used. And then here's just some screenshots of Rally, TDM, uh, again, and, and TDM, if you're using TDM for, as a whole, here's kind of what the data painter can do for you with these rules. And then you can also have these little tiles where your developers can come in there and request their own data. You've seen CDD the whole time. Here, another view of some of the metrics that you can gather. Um, dev test, we talked about that. This is uh, setting up service virtualization and tests to be run. Um, in this case, we only used it for service virtualization. And this is what APM could look like if you had it set up in your environment helps you find, I would say it's time versus error to, to triage, and well, time versus effort, and this helps you get to the error like within a couple of seconds. So, and then of course blaze meter, you saw that as well. So with saying that, luckily this is kind of a webcast, so uh, nobody can actually ask me questions, <laughs> but if you do, please just put them below. Thank you very much.